Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about aggressive fibromatosis or desmoid type fibromatosis. It's a very rare disease and that typically happens in young people. It might present as pain, deformity, swelling or contracture and it is not that trivial. It might lead to long term feeling of isolation, depression, interruption of education and difficulty in employment. It happens typically in young people. The peak age group is 30 to 40 years and happens predominantly in females as compared to males. In patients with familial adenomatous polyposis, desmoid tumor happens in 5 to 30 percent of patients and overall familial adenomatous polyposis accounts for 2 to 10 percent of all desmoid tumors. And unfortunately, after colonic cancer, the most common cause of death in familial adenomatous polyposis is desmoid. So there is a site distribution. It might happen anywhere in patients with non-FAP related patients. However, in familial adenomatous polyposis, it happens mainly in abdomen. If you see this cartoon, it happens in 80% of patients in abdomen. So this is the pathogenesis and it's beyond the scope of whatever I'm discussing today. So uh, the diagnosis of desmoid tumor should be confirmed by an expert histopathologist. So a person who is looking after bone and soft tissue tumor regularly on daily basis must report this disease. On immunostaining, that is on immunohistochemistry, the characteristic feature is presence of beta catenin. 80 to 90 percent of patients have beta catenin gene mutation, and this is how the beta catenin looks: the brown color, which is predominantly located in nucleus. And this is a pa it might also be beta catenin negative. This is a patient, eight-year boy who has beta catenin negative fibromatosis. However, it must be seen by an expert histopathology team. So ideally catenin B mutation must be done in all the patients. In the patients who have beta catenin mutation, it's, it seems to be sporadic. However, if they don't have beta catenin mutation and it's still desmoid, it should raise suspicion of familial adenomatous polyposis. And in that case, APC mutation must be done. Mutation is also prognostic. Like the most common mutations are T41N and S45F and S45F has poor prognosis. So what are the options we have? Whenever a patient comes to us, we might offer them surgery. We, don't, we might observe sometimes tamoxifen and NSAIDs, a drug called imatinib, sorafenib, pezopenib, and methotrexate and vinblastinol and doxorubicin. So years back, the first and primary treatment was surgical resection. However, the things have changed. According to the most recent guidelines, surgery is no more primary standard of fibromatosis. And the primary management is observation. Why surgery is not beneficial? Because even after mar margins are negative, many of them will recur. After first surgery, 50% might recur, while after second surgery, the chance of recurrence are 90%. If you find the literature, hardly you will see a patient who has undergone amputation in fibromatosis, leading to a hypothesis that majority of these patients, these tumors stop growing by themselves and amputation is hardly required. What about observation? In previous series, it was reported in 5% of patients. However, it seems to be under calculation. So we have a data to suggest that it might subside on its own or it might be stable for its own on a long time. And see, this is the data from two retrospective series. Primary endpoint was dropping out from watch and wait policy. If you see these graphs and you see these graphs, then majority of them over a period of time, they stop growing. And if you see the ratio of initial size to their doubling time, the the during after a, like after a period of observation, they stop growing and majority of patients, it happens like this. So, and in the years to come by five years or by 10 years, almost 100 patients of patients stabilize. 
but that does, doesn't mean that pain will not happen these patients who stabilize might have on and off pain what about tamoxifen and NSAIDs so historically or conventionally this was the treatment that was offered and it has the pathological basis is that many patients of fibromatosis have beta estrogen receptor expression however the clinical benefit is still not known because it was started in Europe just because there was no the reimbursement policies were easier for these drugs they had limited toxicity low cost but their effectivity is not known in this series by children oncology group if you see the response rates are hardly there only four partial and one complete responses leading to eight percent of response rates but again the side effects were less but the activity was little there are hardly any prospective studies other than this so this is recent EORTC guidelines that uh, just because of availability these drugs are followed however the evidence for them is low what about imadenib this was a SART phase 2 trial 51 patients were used again re response rates that is the ability to shrink the disease was only 6% so what do we have right now this is sorafenib trial that was presented by Mrenal Gunder and later published in NEGM. This was a phase 3 trial. Some patients were given sorafenib, some were randomized for placebo. And the dose of sorafenib used was 400 mg per day. And if you see the curves are diverging. There was a 2 year progression free rate in sorafenib was 81% as compared to 36% in placebo arm. That means in sorafenib 81% were progression free by the end of 2 years as compared to 30, only 36% in placebo and this was statistically significant. And also objective response rates were higher in sorafenib arm, 33% as compared to 20%. However, it took some time for patient to, for them to ha average heavy response, about 9.6 months. What about chemotherapy? So we have few options here. We have low dose windblastin and methotrexate and in this regimen, the partial response rate are 40%. So when do we give chemotherapy? We give chemotherapy when we assume that it is somewhere in neck or impinging on vital structures, abdomen, or it is fastly growing, or else observation or sorafenib might help. In nutshell, fibromatosis is a very rare disease, one per million. It should be only diagnosed in expert histopathology centers. And beta green mutation should be done, including immunosochemistry also be done, should also be done. The first line treatment for extremity fibromatosis or desmotic fibromatosis remains observation. And if there is progression or it's really symptomatic, then sorafenib should be the next line. Hormonal therapy and NSAIDs and imatinib are probably not that effective. If it is impinging on vital structures or is causing really big symptoms, then we must consider chemotherapy including minblastin methotrexate or doxorubicin. Considering them, it might be cardiotoxic. So I wish everyone best of luck who are dealing with disease and we are really happy to help. Thank you.